we're gonna get right into it. So when you click the settings menu, this is what you see. You've got four tabs on the top, gameplay, controller, video, audio. We're not gonna touch on audio because, I mean, as personal preference, I turn down the music volume. You do what you wanna do with that. We're gonna talk about the main ones under the gameplay setting the uh, controller setting, as well as the video setting. Now, mind you, a lot of these are personal preference, so you alter it how you wanna alter it, but I'm gonna give you my preferences and I'm gonna tell you a couple things that you should change regardless of personal preference, just because it will be better. So for starters, the main one's obviously sensitivity, completely personal preference, whatever you feel comfortable with, but then you've also got the response curve. Now, I can make an entire video talking about response curve if you come from overwatch then you know what it's like to have a ridiculous amount of different aim settings that's what all this is so we can go into detail about all of this but i'm not going to waste your time and i really do not want to go into detail about all of it because it is very complicated so play classic that's what i do if you play call of duty if you play t other titan falls basically any other first person shooter classic is the way to go it is the normal for any other game ever if you come from overwatch steady aim is dual zone you'll know what that means linear is linear ramp so if you want to rock with it rock with it but that's the response curve okay next i want to briefly touch on dead zones because this one might affect a lot of you guys so if you have a really old controller and let's say your controller is just sitting on your desk right and your your crosshairs are moving a tiny little bit if it's doing that put the dead zone to large or if your character's just slowly walking and you're not touching your controller, put it to large. The larger your dead zone, the less sway you're going to have when you're moving. Default is small, so if you're not having that problem, keep it on small. But if you're having that little sway problem where you're not touching your controller and your character's moving or your crosshairs are moving, put it on large and the problem will go away. Alright guys, now this is one of the most important ones. This was a game changer for me. So under the video tab, you're going to see a setting called field of view. Now it's just as it sounds. Field of view is what you see in game. So the lower your field of view, the less you see. The higher it is, the more you see. All the gameplay that I have recorded up until this point has been on default setting, which is 70. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here's the difference. I'm standing in between those two barricades or targets. Now I'm going to increase the field of view and I can see way more. Way more. So everything that I've recorded up until this point has been at the default setting of 70. Now when I switched it to the max setting, I, it took a little bit of getting used to, but let me tell you, it improved my gameplay immensely, like tenfold. It, it's incredible how much more you can get done. You see way more. The only thing that I have to say that you, you'll take a little bit in getting used to, okay? The thing that you gotta get used to the most is distances, because when your field of view is wider, your distances feel farther away. So you, you might think that you're out of range to somebody with a peacekeeper, which is the shotgun. But in reality, they're a lot closer than you think, and then they bop you and you're dead. So the only thing that you kind of got to get used to is dis distancing. I don't know why I keep messing that up. Distancing, you got to get used to that. But other than that, I highly recommend it. Get used to it. You should definitely play on that. Now, one of the most important settings, in my opinion, is the damage numbers. By default, it is set to stacking. Now, you're going to want to change that to floating, but I'm going to show you what stacking looks like first, just so you can see. So when you shoot a target, this is just in the training arena, you can see that every single time I hit, it does 20 damage and it stacks up. So a full clip, the 700. Now, when I have it on floating, which is what we have here, you can see that it's doing 20 damage on each shot. Now, why this might be a problem to some people, like it was for me at the beginning, I would hit somebody, we'll say three times, and it would do 20 three times. It would say I did 20, then 40, then 60. So in my head, I'm like, oh, I did 20 damage, then 40 damage, then 60 damage. And I would tell my teammates, hey, yo, he's one shot. I hit him for 120. Messing up a call out like that is kind of important in, in this game, right? So like, if he's not actually one shot and you're telling everybody he's one shot and you only did 60 damage, yeah, I mean, you're not doing your part, you know? Whereas, if you have it on floating, at least you know exactly what you're doing. You can do the math yourself. You can figure it out. I highly recommend it. Switch it to floating if you haven't already. That's the next one. Besides the field of view, that's another important one. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is the interact prompt style. I recommend it to be on default if you're not familiar with the game. But you can also switch it to compact. Now, obviously, when you have it on default, this is what it looks like when you're going to pick up a weapon, ammo, whatever you're going to pick up in the game, right? 
if you switch it to compact this is what you see it is a lot smaller it makes the ui look way better but there isn't as much details into what you're picking up so if you're not familiar with the game yet then i highly recommend keeping it on default but as you progress and as you start knowing what weapons are what what you're looking for uh, I, I highly recommend switching it to compact. I play with it on compact now, but obviously I've been playing the game quite a bit. So I know what I'm looking for. I know what the items look like on the ground before even picking them up. So I don't have to worry about it. So those are the settings that I use. Feel free to use them. Uh, my sensitivity is a little bit high. Probably going to turn it down a little bit to be honest with you, but... I hope it helped. I hope you learned a little something. Those are the most important. Everything that I show you in this video can be done with a factory Sony controller, okay? Um, on top of that, everything I'm going to share is in no particular order. I've got hero-specific stuff, just regular gameplay mechanics, animation cancels, just a bunch of everything. So, let's just get right into it. So, first I'm going to show you how to animation cancel and swap your weapon faster. So, when you're in a gunfight and you're up close and personal, the first instinct is to just reload your weapon and then continue fighting. But that takes a really long time. The next thing to do is to, rather than reload your weapon, swap your weapon by simply clicking triangle, right? Well, there's a fast way to swap your weapon. It is very simple to do. All you need to do is fire your weapon until you run out of ammo. Then you're going to click triangle to swap your weapon. And at the same time, you're going to click your crouch button. By clicking the crouch button after you swap weapons, you cancel the animation of swapping your weapons and you instantly pull out your second one. So there's also two options for crouching, which I need to touch on. There's toggle and hold. By having it on toggle, you're going to have to click the crouch button twice. Otherwise, you're going to be in the crouch position, which you probably won't want. If you have it on hold, then you, your character will just barely move. He looks like this. So shoot your weapon, tap triangle, keep holding R2 throughout the entire thing, and you'll swap and keep shooting really, really, really fast. It's actually super good to get used to. You should definitely get used to it in the middle of a gunfight. It's a little awkward at first, and it's... I can see it being really hard if you're not playing Claw or if you don't have uh, a special controller like a Scuff or a Battle Beaver like myself, but it is 100% doable. I can do it if I'm just playing Claw, or if you have a different controller scheme, you'll definitely be able to do it too. The next I want to briefly touch on is the flying technique when you're flying off of balloons to fly farther. There's actually two ways you can do this on console. You see PC players do it all the time, but on console you can do it two separate ways. So the first, all you need to do is go up the balloon like you would normally, fly like you would normally, but when your character model puts his feet down to the ground as if he's about to start landing, you're going to look straight up in the air with your right stick. That's all you need to do. So every time your character puts his feet to the ground, look up with your right stick and you'll fly, you'll fly much farther than you would normally. The second actually works way better than the first, but you have a little less control over your character. So before you go up, right, you're going to look straight up in the sky and then you're going to hold L2. Okay. So straight up in the sky, hold L2. And now you're going to be able to look around. So your character model is actually looking straight up in the sky right now. And you're just in spectator mode. Now, all you need to do now is just guide yourself with your left stick into mountains or bigger buildings and you'll start gliding just as you see here so look straight up in the sky hold l2 to go into a uh, free roam or whatever you want to call it like a spectator mode and you just guide yourself with your left stick and you'll be good to go so the next tip that i want to give you is specifically for mirage so the way mirage works is if you have his ultimate ability and you click l1 and r1 at the same time you will spit out a bunch of clones of yourself decoys and they just stand there and they don't do anything right it's super underwhelming it's not a very good ultimate ability the best part about it is that you're invisible but if you're playing against a really good team then they're gonna know that you're invisible anyways so here's what i like to do I pay attention to my surroundings during each fight and I pay attention like, okay, I might use my ultimate here, I might not. If you find an elevated platform such as this rock, it could be much smaller than this, it doesn't matter. If you find a rock and you use your ultimate while you're elevated, every decoy that falls off the elevated platform will run in that direction that they're set out. And they'll keep running until they either run into something or they uh, disappear from your ultimate running out. Every decoy that doesn't fall off will stand on that rock too. So this works in two separate ways. One, one, you got a bunch of decoys that are running out in a straight line right and it might trip out the enemy be like oh whoa, whoa like what's going on right and they start shooting all these decoys you're invisible which is another so you can run in the complete opposite direction of all these decoys it, it, it's much better i feel like that that's the way his ultimate ability should work just on the regular basis it is it's a really good way of using the ultimate so remember to make sure that you're using his ultimate on an elevated platform because what's better than a one-man bamboozle a six-man bamboozle Bamboozle the enemies, boys. Send them all out. 
So while we're talking about specific heroes, I want to talk about Bloodhound because there's a way for you to animation cancel his, his ultimate ability. As you can see right here, it takes a long time to pop his ult. Now, this little secret, this animation cancel is very situational. It depends on where you are and what you're doing. And it's not, you're not going to use this all the time, but it may come in handy at some point. I've used it personally. So what you're going to do is you're going to find a balloon, right? If you walk up to the balloon and you start going up the balloon, you can use his ultimate ability while on the balloon and it'll pop instantly. The second you click L1, R1, it'll pop it. There's no animation for it whatsoever. So you can climb the balloon, you can pop it, you can either jump off the balloon or you can go back down to the ground. So like if I was fighting right here, for example, I could pop the ultimate and I could just jump off the balloon and get into the fight, right? That way there's no way of me getting caught off guard while using my ultimate. So like I said, very situational, but you could find it useful. The next thing I want to talk about is doors. Doors in this game can give you an advantage if you know what you're doing. So I have, a, I have a hypothetical situation set up right here, okay? So I've got my friend coming, and I'm blocking this side of the door. Pretend he's an enemy. If he tries to open the door, it's blocked because he can't get it. He can't open it because I'm standing there. You can break doors if you melee them. So I've got him to break this door, but he's still in the melee animation after he breaks it. So if there's an enemy trying to get into a one-way room and he's trying to break down the door, you can block it with your body. And then you can also plan if he's breaking the door, if he's meleeing it, you can get a couple shots on because he's stuck in the melee animation from trying to break the door. Okay. Now he also sent me this awesome clip. I want to show you guys this. This is hilarious. So What's happening here is he's down, okay? And while he's down, the enemy's trying to thirst him. And what he's doing is, is he's going in and out of this door and he's blocking it. So the guy is trying to thirst him and he keeps going in and out of this door and blocking it from the enemy from opening it. You could use this to your advantage too. Shout out to Ratchet. Thank you so much, Ratchet, for letting me use this, by the way. This is hilarious. I love that. This whole clip is just super funny. This guy is continually trying to thirst him and he just keeps moving in and out of the door and closing it and then blocking him from opening it. Obviously, if this was a decent player, he knew what he was doing. He's probably really new. He would just break the door and shoot him if he really wanted to. But, you know... It's just, it's funny. It's just the way you can, you can see what he's doing with the door. He's blocking it with his body so he doesn't get thirsted. So I've got one more hypothetical set up with my friend Ratchet. What you can do when you're running through a door, if a door is closed, you can sprint through it, double tap square, and you'll actually open, then close it behind you. So if somebody is chasing you, you can close a door, run up a wall, and they'll run right through it looking to where you went, and you'll be behind them and you can get a couple shots on. Again, very situational, but I think the main thing to take from that is that if you double tap square while running through an open door, you close it behind you. So if somebody is shooting behind you, you, you might be able to get away. It'll increase your chances of getting away at least. Speaking of that, another example of this is two-story buildings in this game. Most two-story buildings in this game will have a little ledge between the first and second story that you can actually sit on. So hypothetically, if I was getting chased there and I turned the corner, if he was following me and I actually climbed up there, he wouldn't know. Most people would either keep going around the corner or look for a window or something, or even if they do come around that corner, chances are they're not going to look up. It very rarely happens. I've done that quite a bit, and they've never actually looked up on me. So it's just another good technique of, you know, game awareness, map awareness, just a way of getting away. So remember that. If there's a two-story building, you can... S most buildings, not all buildings, you can sit in between the first and second story. There's usually a little baby ledge there that you can stand on. So I've got one last tip for this video, and that's mobility. And that's the sliding and the jumping. There's so much to it, and there's, it's... I could go into detail. I could make a whole video about this, but... To make it very short and brief, if you slide and jump at the peak of a ledge, you will jump farther than if you were to just sprint and jump. So you can maneuver through buildings, you can like parkour buildings way better. There's gaps in this game that you wouldn't be able to make. There's, if you do it off of a hill, you can keep sliding even farther. But just a short example of being able to do this would be like a gap like this, for example. Let's just say I, I, I just sprint and I jump over this. You know, you got that little climb, it's slow. If you slide and then jump, you get like a little speed boost and you can easily clear this gap. Now there's gaps bigger than this, obviously, that you can actually jump over. This isn't the only one. This is just a little example that I found while ro roaming the map to make this video. There's bigger gaps in this. There's buildings that you can go across and doing the sliding and jumping and then sliding again, you can chain your slides. You can go down hills. You can, you know, peaks of roofs. There's so much more to it. It's, it's a very in-depth type of uh type of tip i guess like i said i can make an entire video on that tip alone but just use your imagination when doing it if you're on top of buildings moving around you can do your own thing with it there's like i said there's a million different ways of explaining it 
But sliding and jumping, whether it be off of fences, off of ledges, down hills, whatever it is, make sure you're slide jumping basically every time you're jumping, I would say. Unless you're maybe jumping in a gunfight or something like that. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I'm going to play the rest of this game out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next video.